So hi there, everybody. And uh, today is a sort of teenagers get together. I don't know if you consider yourself teenagers, but I think you are slightly bigger than the really small ones who cannot uh, get up to the height of the Zoom camera. But uh, the reason I've been asked to give a little talk today is because many people like to do good things in their life and they like to be generally associated with the temple and they think it's a good thing and maybe it's a little bit like a insurance policy for their uh, afterlife or something or maybe you just do it to stop your parents from complaining i don't know but there is a sense in which we notice when we go to the temple that some people seem to be really keen and do a lot of good things in their lives. And maybe some people seem to be a little bit over the top and do too many things. And maybe you have the question in your mind then, just how much is enough because all of us are busy people and we have many things to do like our studies and like relaxing perhaps unless we have helicopter mums then certainly we need to split our time between many things and what we do in a temple is just one of these things so maybe it is a sensible question to ask, well, how much effort or how much time do I put into like cultivating the good deeds? And how, if there is a choice between the different things that we need to do, then which ones are maybe more important? So uh, someone asked me to give uh, some thought to which ones would be the important ones. And uh, in fact, there are a few, so it's going to take me this Sunday and next Sunday to really uh, to um, talk about all of them. So the first thing I really want to talk about is, okay, we might do a little bit of meditation for the ones who are really diligent, then maybe we do some meditation before we go to bed, maybe enough to stop our mom complaining or whatever, but is there something more that we should be looking out for uh, as a guideline to when do we get to the point in our meditation that uh, we can actually be certain that it is enough and gonna be part of our insurance policy? Because really there are two sides to the good things which Buddhists do. Part of it is to like, make sure everyone realizes that we are a Buddhist. So you might say it's like the social appearances part of being Buddhism. And to borrow a little expression from the Christians, if someone were to accuse you of being a Buddhist, would they have enough evidence to convict? So you have to show that you are a Buddhist in order to uh, fit in with the other Buddhists in your family maybe. But what I'm talking about here is how much do you need to cultivate or attain as a result of your practice, not just to keep up appearances, but actually to be safe in this uh, cycle of existence. So like in the eyes of the universe, how much do you have to do? So there's this idea that when we meditate, then we need to make some progress. And as you can see on the slide, then this is a the basic plan which I normally have for uh, how to uh, measure progress when we are meditating. And I'm not sure if you can see the arrow there at all, but from, from the left to the right is where we go in terms of progress. And some of you might meditate on something which is like a picture inside you, in which case you should look at the green part some of you may meditate uh, looking at uh, the feeling inside you, in which case you would look at the red part. 
but generally when you start out in meditation, the very left-hand side of the uh, diagram there, then what's called a preparatory uh, stage of meditation is just something fuzzy that comes and goes, not very realistic, but better than nothing in your meditation. So that is a good start. But what we hope is that with practice that would build up into a stable sort of image or feeling. So the acquired or neighborhood level where you start to have something in your meditation that you didn't put there just by imagining it. So it's not just a figment of your imagination anymore. And from there, you need to get yourself up to what is the counter or first absorption level that sometimes uh, it's like the threshold of what is called the first absorption where you can overcome the ill will and the hatred, the sleepiness, the uh, absent-mindedness and the doubt in your mind in order that your mind will come together in one place. When that happens in our meditation, there is something that happens which is rather like a diamond sphere of light inside yourself, which has a very different feeling from what went before. Not only can you expand and contract that object at will in your meditation, but it also gives you a feeling inside that of certainty that there's something beyond this physical body. And this is important for us to attain. If you're asking about what is enough in meditation, then at the very least, you need to get to this point of the diamond ball of Patamamaka, or what is otherwise known as the first absorption in meditation, if you are to be safe uh, at the end of your life. And better than that is good, but this is like the minimum requirement. So this is what I mean by um, minimum uh, sort of level of practice when we come to meditation. So moving on to the next one, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the, why am I, it's not good. manual. <laughs> so here we go. For the next thing I would like to talk about, it is uh, managing to uh, attend every first Sunday of the month, attend the first Sunday of the month. Okay, now it's Uh, for example, for this month, it was held on the Saturday night. Come on. There we go. Um, the first Sunday of every month in Thailand. So that adds up to sometimes a Saturday night for us in uh, America. Oh, it's not cooperating. Um, this is uh, a time when even if we are busy with other things, but we should try to make sure that we are free either to join the online ceremony of the paying respect to the Buddha on the first Sunday of the month by making some sort of donation or offering food to the Buddha, because this is something that will help to keep us on track with the rest of our Dhammakaya community uh, for lifetimes to come. So this is something that you should pay attention to. I understand that Jin is trying to make sure that it's more convenient for us to hear the translation of this in English these days, and I'm sure she would tell you how much success she has had with that, because even if you don't speak Thai, then it's still important that you join this ceremony. Next thing I'd like to talk about, which you probably already know, is to try to uh, keep the five precepts. Uh, 
And uh, I'm not sure I need to add, explain too much about that, apart from the fact that sometimes we slip up. And uh, if that does happen, then try not to make a habit of it. Otherwise, the karma may drag you down into places that you don't want to go. Next thing I'd like to talk about is the things that we should also avoid, which are known as the roads to ruin. Um, alcohol, we already know from the uh, five precepts, but also uh, what is uh, euphemistically called uh, roaming the streets at unseemly hours means basically anything to do with red light districts. Um, Obsession with the entertainment and sport. Okay, entertainment and sport is good to relax now and then at the end of the day, but if it's like all you do all day instead of uh, getting your studies done or getting your work done, and I'm thinking particularly of uh, gaming, um, then that would be something that would sort of impede your progress uh, in the eyes of the universe on the pathway towards Nirvana. Gambling, including lotteries, uh, generally tends to support us to think about luck in life being more important than doing our due diligence. So generally that is not um, considered something we should indulge in. We need to watch out to make sure our friends are the sort of people who have good habits to brush off on us rather than the sort of friends who are going to uh, influence us in a bad way. So you might need to think about that carefully. And also laziness is generally not considered a pathway towards um, um, prosperity in life. Some people, they hang around, wait for their parents to die so they can get all their parents' money. That is not considered a very a wholesome way to... Uh, so when with. you're ready to begin, Find a comfortable one last thing, I think. Uh, yes, try to get it to stop. Um, chanting every day before bed is a good thing to put your mind uh, in the mode of merit before you go to sleep at night in case you never get to wake up the next morning. It's something our vice abbot used to do even uh, when he came home very late at night, he said the thing that sustained him in the pathway of Dharma was the fact that he did his evening chanting before he went to sleep each day at the uh, head of his bed. And last but not least, uh, it said, if you meditate well, not only a good attainment will help to protect you when you come to the end of your life, but it will allow you to do something which is said to be almost casting off your old body intentionally as you die, uh, instead of just being dragged down into death uh, unmindfully. So we need to learn how to do that in order to have a good death. Uh, you may not be thinking too much about death yet, but who knows when we're surrounded by COVID virus, uh, sometimes we cannot help but think about it, even for the young ones amongst us, especially if you live in Florida. So, uh, being prepared, and if you don't know what it means to prepare yourself for death, uh, what it means to, when you leave your body, go to Thailand, go three times around the pagoda, that sort of thing. If you haven't ever heard of these things before, then you should ask the monks at your temple or ask the monks you know to explain these things to you, because it, don't just think that what you don't know can't help you, it can't harm you. Uh, some things, if you don't know, then you will uh, have a very uncertain future in this, unfortunately, rather precarious uh, life that we lead in this cycle of existence. So this is a quick first half of the baseline virtues, which I'm talking about today. I'm not sure if I should just segue straight to meditation or uh, I see Trang is got her hand up, which means... Yes, I may have a question. So I see that, that this list is quite long. And um, I wonder how much time should we devote into like meditation and how much time should be for chanting? Can we choose uh, either one or should we apply, like practice both of them and how much time yeah. should be good for us as a teacher? Our nun Kunyai was once asked the same question and she 
knew that if she said meditations were important, the person wouldn't do chanting. And if she said chanting is important, then the person would not do meditation. So she said both are important. But I think what I'm trying to say today is, it's not just the fact you do it. It's like, oh, do my meditation, get it over with so I can get on to some fun stuff. Uh, it, the reason we meditate is to attain something. And if we haven't attained that level yet, then we need to put more time into it until we get there. And once we do get there, then maybe we don't need to put as much time into it anymore. So all of these things are really, they're not just for appearances, but they are to sort of uh, be our uh, refuge when we are in times of crisis or when uh, the going gets tough. Uh, if it's not yet strong enough to be our refuge, then uh, we will be in a, in, a, in a difficult place. So it's important to make time, but how much time? I think you need to make that decision for yourself. And it depends very much on uh, what you aim for in life. But I think no one aims not to be safe and well cared for in lives to come. So that should be in there somewhere in your um, idea for what you want to achieve in life. Yeah. Thank you. You can type them in the chat box if you're shy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did anything come up during the quiz that anybody had questions about? I think maybe some of those questions weren't, we didn't really go into those too, too deeply. Yeah, some of those questions are really tough. Uh, actually, I have one question. Why um, attending one day, of, one time of Bucha Crowd Fra, uh, like we can help us get more than merits of offering food for the whole year to the monks. Uh, can I answer? Um, it's because it's offering to a Buddha, which is already a lot of merits. But it's not just one Buddha, but countless Buddhas, all the Buddhas of the past in Nirvana, more countless than all the grains of sand in all the four great oceans. Therefore, it's like one merit is like multiplied, like exponential, countless times. So it is a special, especially important. Uh, even if you don't have time to visit or to make merits at other time, but if you can manage that time, then it will cover you for the month. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so even if I uh, did not have a chance to offer any food or any donation, I just attend and meditate with everyone else, I would get the same merit? Well, maybe uh, it's more uh, intense merit, yeah. Yeah, and also keeps you with the community of Dhammakaya practitioners uh, in a special way. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. 